where I live in Hockley in Essex, I'm quite fortunate because just across the road is the entrance to these lovely woods, these ancient woods that uh, go back many years, certainly a long time before radio, and <laughs> was certainly before I became interested in radio. But I recently um, had a conversation with somebody who said to me, I've seen your videos, but never really seen your radio station. What do you actually use? Well, it was a bit of an embarrassing question because really, truly, my radio system is very simple. And I think it must go back to um, a time when I first became licensed. I was, uh, I was a teenager then. I just started work. I hadn't got much money. And um, so it was a question of, well, actually, the first transmitter that I had, I built. Um, my father drove me to London, um, and there I purchased a second-hand radio receiver, the R107. That was a brute of a radio, that was. Massive, great radio. I think it weighed over 100 weight. <laughs> we put it in the boot of my car, or my father's car, and drove home. And uh, to my, uh, well, I wouldn't say surprise, I assumed it worked, but I, you know, I didn't, I was a bit naive then. I assumed that if you bought a radio, it worked. Well, it did work. Plugged it into the mains and it worked. And it covered from, I think 1.5 megahertz, may have covered the medium waves as well, 1.5 megahertz up to 18 megahertz, I think. So it covered the 160 meter band. I didn't have a transmitter, so I had to build myself a transmitter which was a simple two-valve job. And uh, that uh, got me a 160 meters crystal controlled. I can't remember the valve lineup of the transmitter. I think it may have been an L91 oscillator on a 6V6 power amplifier. That gave me a power output of around about, I don't know, six or seven watts. We had a 10 watt power limit then, although I have to confess that uh, we didn't actually observe it very often. Um, there was many high power stations on 160 meters in those days, even with the 10 watt power limit. And uh, I think the crystal frequency I had was 1.981 megahertz. And that wasn't a problem really, because that particular crystal was quite common. There was a, quite a supply of these, so I'm not quite sure what the frequency was originally used for during the war, but anyway, I think we used to gather on that frequency. And that's how I started my ham radio career, really. Well, not career, but my hobby. I was, what, uh, 17 years old, I think, then. But it was a basic station, and, you know, for whatever reason, that basic concept of a simple station has stuck with me. I mean, it doesn't mean to say I haven't caught up with, you know, the developments of radio. I don't operate crystal controlled now. Good gracious me, impossible almost. But I still retain this joy of operating simple ham radio equipment. And when I say simple, I mean, it's not simple. The transceiver I use, I'll come, come to that in a second. The transceiver I use is not simple. It's quite complex. But it's one transceiver. And uh, that really does me. That probably surprises some of you. You think, gracious me. He's run an amateur radio company for the last 50 years. And he's talking about a simple radio station. Why hasn't he got racks and racks of gear? Well, I suppose because I don't feel I need it. Now, I'm not knocking the uh, idea of having a lot of gear. In fact, I should be encouraging it, shouldn't I? Because, I mean, that's how my business grew. But you can only use one transceiver at a time, generally speaking. And, uh, uh, I, you know, if you feel happy with lots and lots of gear around, you're great. I mean... I've got uh, several cameras and I've got uh, a number of lenses, so I suppose that is a hobby where you do to collect items. Um, I do quite a bit of music and I've got three keyboards. 
Although I hasten to add that each of those keyboards fulfills a different function and I can use two at one at one time, but there we are. Anyway, we're getting away from the subject. And the question that was originally asked, Peter, what is your current ham radio station? Well, I'll show you. But first of all, uh, after a walk in the woods, uh, cycle down to get a cup of coffee. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. So my simple station here is the uh, FT710, FT710, an IC705 and an ACOM linear amplifier. And really truly that works for me. Now, if you've watched this channel for some while, you will probably know that I did have an ICOM 7300, which I loved, great transceiver. And the main reason I swapped was because uh, I've got a developing eye problem, which has been going for years actually, but it's getting worse now. And I really needed a larger screen and the IC7300 doesn't have uh, a connector on the back for an external screen. And so I decided to swap over and use the FT710. Now, why did I choose the FT710? Well, several reasons, actually. Firstly, it doesn't cost a lot of money. But secondly, believe it or not, it's Yesu's first full uh, HF SDR transceiver. The other transceivers in their range, the FTDX10 and the others, uh, all have superhead front ends. But the FT710 is a completely different design, uh, SDR all the way through. And it does have the facility of an external screen. And I've got an external screen here, which you can see up there. And that enables me to read things somewhat better. And I do like the panoramic display. Um, I know that the 7300 had one as well, but the panoramic display on the FT710 is very good and it's even better if you have it on an external display and it's very very sensitive I find that even very weak signals I can spot on the display I often operate here at night time um, on 20 meters when the band ostensibly is closed or very quiet but there are some openings to the short path on to Australia and uh, I I enjoy those sort of contacts uh, very often in the evening. And that is great because I can spot these sort of weak signals, uh, particularly down the CW end. Now the FT710, if you don't operate CW, you may not be interested in this a little bit, but the FT710 is very good on CW. It's got full break-in. It's got very good filtering system. Um, you can narrow the pass band down to about 100 hertz, I think it is. But it's also got uh, an audio filter and an audio filter enables you to switch in the audio filter and it just it's it really it's almost like a, a resonator basically it will only pass a signal at a particular frequency of um, pitch it's difficult to explain um, without actually uh, sort of demonstrating it and I can't demonstrate it here very easily um, but basically, if you switch the audio uh, filter in, and I will try and do a video on it actually, um, it's, just like an it's just like an oscillator, it's like an oscillator in the room. Even a weak signal can sound quite loud. So for CW, it's very, very good. And say so it's got full break-in, et cetera. Um, it doesn't decode CW, but I would suggest that perhaps decoding CW is not a good feature it's not a feature near the top of the list for the simple reason that when you try and decode cw um, the cw has got to be sent um, well um, and if there's any um, hesitation then it doesn't decode properly and very often it has a hiccup anyway and doesn't decode properly so whilst it's interesting to monitor cw decoding uh, i wouldn't suggest it as a live contact because you're likely to find that it has glitches. So um, decoding CW is not top of my list and uh, the fact that it doesn't, doesn't worry me. The FTDX10 does, but 
it will send uh, messages you can you can store messages for CW as you can with audio as well you can store CQ uh, messages that sort of thing for contests etc so that's very good the thing that I really liked about the uh, 710 was its receiver its receiver is phenomenal and um, if you are a fan of Sherwood Engineering and you go onto the Sherwood Engineering site you'll find that the FT710 is right at the top um, beating um, most HF transceivers there's, there's nothing at that price that comes anywhere near it so the receiver side is very good and you know when you've been involved in amateur radio as long as I have you switch on a radio and it doesn't take you long to think wow that's a good receiver and that's what I found with the 710 I switched it on and after five minutes I thought wow that is a very good receiver. So receive side is good. On the transmit side, I have got no problems at all. It delivers 100 watts. It will go down to 5 watts. It won't go down to 1 watt for QRP, but it will go down to 5 watts, go up to 100 watts. No problem at all. The antenna tuner in it is very, very good. It's quite wide ranging. Now, I use a half size 5RV, and I think on the worst band, I've got something like a 5 to 1 VSW, or maybe on 15 metres, I can't remember now. Um, but the internal antenna matching unit on the 710 will actually match it. Now, that brings me on to the amplifier. I bought this ACOM amplifier, which is the ACOM 1010. I bought that about two years ago now. It's a valve amplifier, which means to say it's got a Pi network. It's not auto-tuning. And I know that these days, a solid state amplifier, which has got auto tuning, um, is great. I'll say auto tuning. It's, it's auto band switching, instant, instant operation. It doesn't have a tuner inside. Um, and and there, in, there lies the problem. That if you're using an F, a, a, a half size or a full size 5RV, and you're using a solid state linear amplifier, you're going to have to have some sort of matching unit that will handle the power. The good thing about the ACOM amplifier, uh, the valve version, is that it's got a Pi network. And a Pi network is basically an antenna matching unit. I can match the uh, 5RV with this linear amplifier on all bands, it's a half size 5RV, on all bands from 40 through to 10 meters. No problem at all, because I've got this Pi network. Uh, built in and all the almost all valve amplifiers have got pi network so if you're thinking of buying a linear just give that some thought that if you buy a solid state linear you're almost certainly going to have to buy a matching network as well if you buy a valve one you probably won't need a matching network provided you're using a kx fed system and that is quite uh, um, a sort of an interesting point to consider. The other downside of a valve amplifier is that it takes time to warm up. This takes about three minutes to warm up. So if I hear some DX, which is very weak, and they're running a kilowatt, and I think well, there's no way I'm gonna, gonna contact them unless I run a kilowatt, or whatever it is on this 700 watts, I think. Um, I've gotta sit there for three minutes and wait for it to warm up. That's the downside. Uh, by the way, it's got um, two antenna sockets. I've got two HF antennas. I've got the half size 5 v and a vertical. Um, and I can switch between them using the linear amplifier. The linear amplifier's got two antenna sockets on the, on the back. The 710 has only got one antenna socket, so if I'm operating the linear, I can switch between two antennas, which saves a little bit of money on a coaxial um, uh, switch. So let's talk a little bit about the IC705, um, which I've had for now for about three years. Lovely little transceiver, obviously battery operated, but you can run it off an external supply. And what does it do for me? Well, it enables me to keep in touch with activity on 2 meters and 70 cents, both FM and SSB. Uh, I do a little bit of activity on those bands, but not much. And um, it also enables me to obviously uh, go out QRP because it's totally portable and I can I, I run I run it quite a bit on um, QRP operation either 5 watts from its internal battery which actually lasts quite a long time or from an external supply which gives me 10 watts now the IC705 doesn't have a built-in antenna matching unit but I tend a lot of the time to operate from resonant antennas anyway and also I found the IC705 is quite tolerant 
even a two to one VSWR, it delivers full power. So it's quite tolerant in that respect, even though it doesn't have a built-in matching unit. But I do take the point that some people say, look, it, it should have had a, a, an ATU built-in. Well, it, it doesn't. I just got to accept that. If you want uh, to use a 705 and you want to use an NFED wire, um, and you're not going to use a 49 to 1, then you may have to use an antenna matching unit, or if you're going to use it with something like a 5RV. But I found if you use it with a resonant antenna, that includes NFED half waves, um, it's, it's fine with NFED half waves, no problem at all, even with a bit of VSWR. But it's a great little transceiver, and that really is my station. My station covers uh, 160 meters through to 70 SEMs, albeit I've only got maximum of 10 watts on the VHF bands, but that sees me through. And it's a simple station. Now, I know some of you may think, well, gosh, you know, why? Well, as I said right at the beginning, that's, that's the way I work. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that also got fairly simple stations, probably even simpler than I've got. And um, I'm sure you'll make the appropriate comments underneath, or you may disagree with me completely and say, Pete, you should have a wall-to-wall uh, radio room. Well, I haven't got a wall-to-wall -wall radio room, and at the age of 81, I'm not likely to invest in a wall-to-wall -wall radio room now. This keeps me happy. And that really is one of the secrets of any hobby, keeping you happy. You choose the area you want to operate in, you choose how much you can afford, how much you want to spend on it, and you make the best of the rules that you've laid down for yourself. So there we are. Thanks for the support on this channel, much appreciated. Don't forget, by the way, if you want to buy an FT710, of course we stock them. There is a cash back at the moment on the uh, 710, and we also do part exchange. And uh, if you do cash back and part exchange, you get quite a good deal. And if you have the field version, which is the only difference between the field version and the standard one, is the field version doesn't have the external speaker, but you've still got a, a built-in speaker. So go for the field version, do part exchange, take advantage of the cash back, you've got a real deal there. In the meantime, thanks for your support on this channel, thanks for your support at the shop, on the website, etc, etc, etc. Thanks for supporting the company. Take care. Enjoy Ham Radio. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.